here with Brides, Bumps and Babies Photography, coming to you with another episode in my video blog series. This will be part three with Wanda Bonner of Blue Linden Weddings and Events. Hi everyone. So um, we have talked about destination weddings in the past and a look at wedding planning and her business in general. Today we're going to talk about military <coughs> weddings. Yep. And uh, I'm going to go off the board. How did you get started with military? How did that... Uh... Um, Kind of by accident, some a military couple found me online through the knot, and um, we hit it off right away because of the consultation. The groom was a fighter pilot, and my husband is a thirty-year veteran. Yeah. So I could directly speak to kind of their lifestyle and their concerns, and it didn't hurt that my husband was at the time working at the Air Force mm. Academy, where he where the groom was stationed. So. You know, I threw a couple, I did a little bit of name dropping. Yeah. And I, I that, that, we just had an instant, instant connection because of the commonalities mm -hmm. that we had, yeah. And that's pretty much why you like working with them, is because it's something familiar. And yeah. And they gave service, they're giving service to the company, or it, to, the, to the country. So. Right, right. And there are, um, there are definitely nuances to military couples that civilians just don't experience. And so I think it really gives a couple some peace of mind knowing that, that I get it. I, I get what their challenges are. Um, I get what the complications are in their lives because I've been there. I've, I've lived it. And um, I truly understand that their lives kind of aren't their own. They, be yeah. they belong to the United States government, whether it's Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Yeah. So I think it, it really settles people to know, oh, okay, we don't, I know they're acronyms. I mean, it sounds silly, but, you know, when they, military people talk in acronyms. And yeah. I, they don't have to stop and take time to explain what the heck they're talking about. What makes it different to plan for a military way? That's a great question. I, it really comes down to their, the stress level that they are facing for time, timelines. They don't have the option of saying, hey, we're getting married June 13th and I'd like two weeks off. That may or may not be the oh, case. Okay. Um, they concern themselves with TDY, which is temporary duty orders, that they might get only a couple of weeks notification that you're, you're being shipped out. Yeah. Or trainings. Um, I had a helicopter pilot have to go to, it's called Sears School. It's basically survival training where they get dumped in the middle of the desert and have to figure out how to survive. Mm -hmm. That happened three months before her wedding. Wow. And imagine the stress. Now, all she wants to do is plan her wedding and do the fun part, and she has to completely compartmentalize that and not think about it because she is literally surviving. She has to get out of the desert first. Literally, yeah. <laughs> figure out you know how, where she's going to get her food. Is she going to eat cactus or snake? And how she's going to stay warm at night. And so. Yeah. You know, there are, there are challenges that, yeah. that civilians just don't understand, the possibility of being deployed. Yeah. Um, so it, a lot of it is around uh, very focused planning and then relaxing yeah. and then focused planning because you don't, again, to be redundant, you, yeah. you just don't know when that time is going to be taken yeah. away from you. I was speaking with a, a potential client the other day and he's, and they're long distance right now, he's in North Carolina, she's out here. And they want to do it in October, but they won't know exactly till yeah. late March right. when he, whatever that window of time is. I don't know if it's always that amount of time, but until he knows mm -hmm. when does marching mm -hmm. orders are, so to speak, as far right. as when he can get off. So they can't even reserve the venue. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So. And that's another, you brought up another, another challenge that a lot of couples don't face is not only do they not live in Colorado, so they're planning a destination wedding, they don't live in the same, same state as each other. So... Uh, we currently have somebody, it, he lives in Africa, she lives in Hawaii, they're getting married in Colorado. Very different time zones. Yeah. So it, it, I get it and it doesn't, like, it doesn't upset me or it, I just know that we, this is, these are the parameters that we're working within and then add stress to that. Yeah. That she just wants to talk to him and he's 11 hours difference yeah. or, you know, he's doing top security stuff, yeah. and he will go weeks without being able to be in touch. Seems like these type of wedding couples really need a planner. <laughs> they, they really do, because they just don't, 
they don't have the option to just kick yeah. back and methodically plan like most yeah. most couples do. It's interesting, yeah. and this being the third little episode of learning a little bit more, even though I know a little bit yeah. uh, from getting to know you in the past, that they seem like the clients you get, there's challenges. Yes. You know? I mean, there's challenges in any wedding plan, sure. but military, the destination, that you like challenges, like sol solving these puzzles. I do. And and it's kind of like job security because they need you, I guess. Right. But, but no, it just seems right. like they're, um, it, it's not for everybody probably sure. to be able to handle some of these situations, sure. whether it's destination. Um, yeah. It's not always straightforward. Yes. That's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. But that's neat because you get to solve different curveballs that are thrown your way. It and does. So and, I, and I think what makes me good at military is um, the ability to really put myself in their shoes because I've, I've been there. Mm -hmm. I mean, luckily... Um, when I planned my wedding, my husband wasn't deployed. He right. was in town. We did live in this. But, you know, having kids and, and all of that while, you know, he was doing Northern Watch or Southern Watch or, or whatever mm -hmm. the, the case may be, there's, it's also so much more emotionally charged. So mm -hmm. you have the emotion of a wedding, the stress of a wedding, the emotion of being separated, mm -hmm. sometimes in dangerous situations. Yeah. Um, and I, I almost... I don't want to say become their mom. It's it's obviously not that familiar of a mm -hmm. relationship, but I really am, am able to um, be a sounding board. Yeah. To listen, and to serve them well. Yeah. Yeah, I got this. Trust yeah. me, I got this. You go do you. You go to survival school and, yeah. and worry about you. Uh, yeah. We're good here on the home front. Yeah, just hit me. Front. Last summer I photographed. Uh, he was a marine. Mm -hmm. And. But they're both Greek, and it was at the big Greek oh, yeah. cathedral here, sure. and then at that other club. But yeah, he was in his full... Oh, military um, Yeah, and so it just cool. looked really cool. So sure. And then at the Greek church, sure. with at that background, background, it was just yeah. like very statuesque and impressive. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, my notes went away on me, so I'm going to just look real quick sure. to see if there's anything else. Oh, do both... Folks have to be military for it oh, to be considered. No, well, I guess mine that I just talked about wasn't so. Right. No, n not at all. Um, one or the other, and they don't, they can be active or reservist. Um, I do offer them a military discount. I did um, as well. Yeah. yeah cool. I mean, I, I appreciate their service. Yeah. Um, and you know, any any little bit I can mm -hmm. do to help support them. Um, so no, it doesn't it doesn't have to be both. Um, typically, if if it's the man that's in the military, he's usually in uniform. Um, we've done a couple where they change out of their uh, military uniform for the reception. Um, I dig it when they do the saber arch or the sword mm -hmm. arch. You mm -hmm. know, I just I just think that that's unique and a nod to all of their all of their yeah. service. Yeah. You know. Um, I know there's a commercial on TV for Navy Federal Credit Union. Yeah. There's a really pretty gal. That sh they show her getting her wedding, mm -hmm. and she's like, boom. So she's wearing a nice traditional right. dress that she wedding looked dress. wonderful in. I've only so done one wedding where the bride wanted to wear her mess dress. She ended up not, but that was originally the plan yeah. for her to get married in, in her uniform. Is there anything with other vendors or the venues that, let's say venues, mm -hmm. that the venues need to be aware of or anything? Or is it just not really. more about the the salute or this or the guard, right. there's nothing with the venue that needs to change or decor. I mean, decor is decor, so if right. there was decor, you just, you know. No, the only thing that sometimes I have to, I guess, for lack of a better word, educate catering on, is if there's a missing man table. Okay. So essentially, it's, you know, like a POW type table, yeah. and a lot of caterers have never done that before, Yes. so I just let them know how to set that up. and, and I also try and let them know what the symbolism is. Like, why are we putting it? Why are we leaning the chair this way? And why is there salt on the table and no pepper? Did they bring a meal? Or no. Not, not some so it's yeah, know. it's an empty plate. Um, it's a small salad plate that has salt in it to signify tears. There's a single red rose. So there's a oh, wow. a lot going on on the table. The glass is turned upside down because that person isn't here to join us. And then the chair is typically you know tipped against the table for no one to sit in. Well, and being straight transparent, yeah. I, I photographed that last one. I don't remember them having any of that, so there yeah. might not have been anyone A missing. lot of military weddings don't but choose to I do, it. and I was the shoot one, anytime I've not shot, I haven't shot an Indian wedding, 
Mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. well, speak to the planner that knows, you do your yeah. research. Yeah. So sometimes when I'm shooting table details, right. I might rearrange something. So if the glass is upside down or something, you want to fix it? No, 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 I'm saying that I, that's why I would yeah. ask and say, sure. Now that we've discussed it, I've, it's I've a very important caterers. thing. That, like, why would you yeah. mess with that? But, I've had caterers bring pepper. Yeah. No, it's just salt for the yep. tears, you know, or um, bring more than one slice of lemon. It's supposed to be, you know, bitter. Yeah. Bitter that they're not here. That's so awesome. just so they're. I mean, it, and not everybody holds to that tradition really rigid, really strictly. Yeah. Um, I've had a couple of times where they wanted the place setting at, at the table of mm. guests. Mm. Um, that's definitely going off tradition, but yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's whatever is the there couple any, wants. So yeah, it's what the couple wants, but is there any overarching military, can the military have any rules about somebody's wedding? Or is it just... They, uh, not, none that I know of. I mean, because these traditions came from somewhere, mm -hmm. so... Mm -hmm. If it's off can base, you? they can kind of... Okay. Make it their own. Okay. What if it is on the customized? Then there is a little more. Someone might be watching. Mm -hmm. Like going, if it's hey. in the if the wedding is in the chapel, the the chapel has very strict. Okay. The Air Force Academy Chapel. They have very strict ways of doing things. Okay. Um, you can't bring in outside decor other than maybe some flowers. You can't okay. hang things on the. Beach. So it it depends okay. on the facility itself. But the reception, no, okay. not so much. Cool. Nothing that would be unusual from any other venue. Cool. You know, no, no nails in the wall. Cool. You know, but nothing other than that. Well, cool. Yeah. Anything else? Or I think this is just a good starter kit, as yeah. I keep saying, to whet the appetite for folks that are interested that are in the military. Mm -hmm. So uh, she knows what she's talking about. Uh, her, her husband's served for 30 years. 30 years. So um, give Wanda a call if you're planning uh, any type of military wedding. You can see she knows what she's talking about. So, yeah. Yeah. BlueLindenWeddings.com? Yeah, Blue Blue and uh, we'll see you on another episode. That wraps it up. We're only doing three with uh, Wanda, so this is number three of three. So Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thanks and, for uh, having me. Thanks to True Life Studios, where we're both members, for letting us film here. So All right, you guys, until next time, take care. Bye. Thanks.